You've seen old bridges, barns, and wooden ships that have survived centuries of storms, rain, and frost. Ever wondered why some wooden structures seem to defy time, standing firm while newer ones collapse after just a few seasons? The secret isn't modern chemistry or synthetic coatings. It's a centuries-old technique developed by some of history's most resourceful builders. Today I'm going to reveal a method that not only protected wood in the harshest conditions, but also kept it strong enough to survive the equivalent of a hundred storms. And this is something you can apply yourself, whether you're preserving historical wood, building a long-lasting structure, or simply fascinated by ancient ingenuity. The real enemy of wood is moisture and time. Wood may seem tough, but it's surprisingly vulnerable. Rain, snow and humidity seep into its fibres, creating the perfect environment for fungi and bacteria. Left untreated, even the strongest oak can weaken, crack and eventually crumble. Yet, history shows us that some wooden constructions survived for hundreds of years, enduring weather that would destroy modern untreated timber in decades. The key lies in controlling how water interacts with the wood and using natural substances to reinforce its structure. Long before chemical preservatives existed, builders discovered that wood could be made exceptionally durable through a combination of drying, surface treatment and natural protective coatings. The first step was always selection and seasoning. Dense, resin-rich woods like oak, pine or larch were favoured because they naturally resist water and decay. Once felled, the logs were air-dried carefully to reduce internal moisture without cracking. You know, this simple process already increased longevity significantly. The next, less obvious step involved treating the wood surface. Ancient builders found that exposing wood to controlled heat or fire created a charred layer that protected the fibres underneath. This carbonized surface was, well, remarkably resistant to water penetration and deterred insects and fungal growth. The technique, seen in Viking longhouses and Japanese architecture centuries later, effectively turned the exterior of the wood into a shield while leaving the interior strong and flexible. Finally, natural oils and resins were applied. Pine tar, linseed oil and animal fats were rubbed or brushed into the wood. These substances soaked into the pores, sealing them against moisture and adding an antimicrobial barrier. The combination of surface charring and oil treatment created a system that modern engineers recognize as both durable and sustainable capable of extending the life of wood far beyond what we typically expect. Applying this knowledge doesn't require a medieval workshop. Begin by selecting dense resinous wood and let it season naturally for several months. Avoid stacking logs directly on the ground. Elevate them on supports to prevent ground moisture from being absorbed. Once the wood is dry, lightly char the exterior using a controlled flame. The goal isn't to burn it, but to create a thin blackened layer that will act as a barrier. Once the wood cools, apply a natural oil or tar, rubbing it in thoroughly so it penetrates the fibres. For ongoing protection, repeat the oiling every year or two particularly on surfaces exposed to heavy rain. 
So, this method can actually be applied to a variety of projects. Outdoor furniture, fencing, decks, log cabins, or even, you know, wooden boat parts, all benefit from this treatment. Survivalists and off-grid builders often rely on similar techniques to preserve wood in harsh climates, where, well, modern preservatives just aren't available. The principle is universal. Protect the surface, reinforce the fibers, and reduce water exposure to make wood resilient against decades of weather. In regions with heavy rainfall and long, harsh winters, the survival of wooden structures was, frankly, critical. Vikings, medieval farmers, and early settlers simply could not afford to replace posts, beams, or ships every few years. By perfecting the combination of drying, charring, and oiling, they ensured their constructions lasted long enough to support multiple generations. It wasn't just about durability. It was really a matter of survival and efficiency, you know, allowing them to focus on expanding settlements, cultivating land, and traveling by sea without worrying that their wood would fail in the first storm. Moreover, this technique reflects a deep understanding of natural materials. Ancient builders observed, experimented, and refined their methods over centuries, creating solutions perfectly adapted to local conditions. It's a lesson in working with nature rather than against it, using observation and practical experimentation to achieve truly remarkable results. Historians, reenactors, and restoration specialists use these ancient methods to maintain authentic structures. Outdoor decks and gazebos treated with controlled charring and oiling, well, they last decades longer than untreated wood. Garden posts, bridges, and cabins built with these principles resist rot and insect damage naturally. Even in modern survivalist contexts, knowing how to preserve wood without synthetic chemicals is invaluable, especially in remote areas where replacement timber is scarce. By following these steps, you are essentially combining historical wisdom with practical modern utility. The lesson is clear. Wood doesn't fail because it is weak. It fails because it is exposed to the wrong conditions without protection. Ancient builders understood this intuitively. By drying, treating, and sealing wood, they created structures capable of withstanding hundreds of storms. This is not just a trick for survival. It's a window into the ingenuity of our ancestors and their relationship with the natural world. If you found this guide valuable, make sure to subscribe to Echoes of Valor for more insights into ancient techniques and forgotten knowledge. Share this video with fellow history buffs, reenactors, and survival enthusiasts so we can keep these remarkable methods alive. There is wisdom in the past that still protects, preserves, and teaches us today.